Okay, we're going to do something a little different right now. So, some of you know that I, uh, I'm going to do right? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Some of you know that I have uh, myself and my colleague Tom O'Malley, we have a podcast. The podcast is called Drinking Wine, Talking Tech. We started it for fun about a year and a half ago, and just like it sounds, we drink wine, talk tech. And we just did it for fun, and in a few months, thousands and thousands of people all over the world started to listen to our podcast. It's the biggest surprise for me. <laughs> Bless you. It's the very biggest surprise for me. Um, so we've been through two seasons. Uh, we've had lots of great guests and luminaries, and we continue to have thousands of listeners. People keep listening every week. And we do this thing in a small startup in Palo Alto, California. And we're done with two seasons, and now we're getting ready to kick off season three. And so to kick off season three, we're going to have the first live show in front of you guys. So we're going to do for the next 25 minutes or 30 minutes a live drinking wine talking tech podcast, which will be available on iTunes and Google Play and every podcast platform you're familiar with uh, within just a few weeks. So um, to get started, I'm going to uh, invite up my terrific host, Mr. Tom O'Malley, who's joining us from Palo Alto. You can give him a round of applause. <laughs> Bit of fun, right? Okay, please have a seat. Uh, even got the theme music. Awesome yeah. job by the uh, media guy there in the back. Thank you so much. Uh, so we are. Uh, so Tom is a um, a technologist his whole life. He's worked for big tech companies, including Oracle. Uh, currently, he's the CEO of a um, an up and coming tech company called Convedit. And him and I have become great friends, and we have a lot of fun doing this podcast. So what's going to happen is. Uh, you are all now part of this global live podcast. Uh, I'm going to take a seat and we're going to kick off the show. They're recording it. And so if you can, like, if you're going to clap, which you should, <laughs> and laugh, do it often so we get it on the recording. When, uh, when I point at Jonathan, you go, wow. And then when I point at myself, just laugh hysterically. <laughs> I see it's working. They're ready, it's for you. Ready? ready? You're queuing up the audience. Wow. Ah. <laughs> okay, you didn't tell me about this. It was kind of sick. I, I did the drinking before I got here. You did? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, it, we're going to, I'll just count it down. Uh, yeah, here, three, two, one, okay. Uh, this is Drinking Wine, Talking Tech. I'm Jonathan Reichenthal. And I'm Tom O'Malley. Well, this is season three. This is exciting. What do you think? Usually we have one guest at a time. <laughs> We've got a few guests in the room with us. We do. We do. We have uh, amazing people from, I think, the city of Sacramento and the state of California and probably from all over the place. Should we do some introductions? Maybe we start on the left here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, when we were talking in season two, I told you we were going to take this thing live. We were going to put it in front of a, a live audience and you kind of laughed at me. I said, well, no, really? Were you were, we were deep in the bottle, too, at that time. <laughs> yes. He doesn't, when we're drinking, he doesn't really take anything I say seriously. I think that's true. Well, we usually do this at the end of the day, right? So this is something like after a long, exhausting day, we'll get together literally in the basement of my office, and um, we'll hear you know, footsteps above us, and we're ready to unwind. You know? So to getting that cork out of the bottle is just an exciting <laughs> thing. Today we're not we're not drinking, uh, but uh, maybe we can do some whining. We could. We, there's a lot. There's some stuff to. Well, I'm an optimist. Yeah, I, I prefer not to whine. What about RFPs or something? Can't we just pick something that we can all agree that needs to go away? <laughs> <laughs> You'd agree, right? Yeah. The bane of our lives is public uh, servants. That's I true. Um, so why, what's the show about? Why why do we actually do the show? You know, for me, I don't know about you, but um, I just like to drink. <laughs> well, <laughs> and I love wine. Yeah. So that's uh, two things which are positive. Yeah. But it's really because, so first of all, I'm on the, I, I spent a career in technology. Yeah. Spent a good deal of my career in the private sector. Now I'm uh, doing very uh, humbling work in the, in the, in the public sector. Uh, but we're, you know, we, we live and work in Palo Alto, uh, you know, where, where a lot of tech is happening. It's pretty exciting. And, and you're, you're an entrepreneur. You're running a startup, you know, real time during the show. Yeah, and uh, you know, along the way, though, I think uh, I think I'm a humanist overall, though. Like, I'm a technologist, but I think the reason why we do this show is because it's about enhancing humans. Good. Yeah, 
So that, that whole bots working for bots, I'm not buying it. You're not buying it? No. Well, um, and, 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 and it's interesting because people are fascinated all around the world in what's going on in California, and, and particularly in Silicon Valley. I mean, it's a pretty unique place, right? Yeah, entirely. Particularly that uh, Rosewood Hotel at the top of uh, Sand Hill Road. It, it, yes. Yeah, it gets write-ups. If, if Tom will tell you the stories about that later offline, on, if you're interested. Offline, offline. So I gave this sort of wide-ranging presentation today, covered a lot of stuff. Uh, what, what spoke to you? What jumped out to you? Well, gang, I'm, I'm really into uh, knowledge. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think we've been in the information era. I think this last industrialization, or as you called it, that era is going to be defined by information. And so what I'm sort of <clears throat> all abuzz about is the idea that we're running out of information. I know that sounds weird. But Running think, out? Yeah, I mean, think, think about this. Think, think about like the world speeding up. Remember that last graph that you showed? Yeah. Well, as things start arcing like that, it's like how long is a white paper good for? Like, 10 minutes? Like if our content, if the shelf life of information is condensing, like things speed up, information right. condenses. So that's, that's sort of what I've been thinking a lot about is that you know, because explicit information is not infinite, yeah. right? The, the, Google's a great modern day Dewey Decimal System for what's explicit. But what I'm into is like, how do we get into the tacit? Because tacit knowledge is infinite, it's ever changing, it's ever moving. And so that's, that's what I've been thinking about, usually after some wine. <laughs> I think you make a very good point. I mean, yeah. it, this idea of permanency is no longer permanent. Yeah. So Every, everything's flowing, everything's streaming, right? Exactly. Tell me about blockchain. You think it's uh, nonsense? You think um, there's no, something I'm, to it? I'm, I, look, I think distributed ledger is is a really important asset to humankind. I think blockchain is still a word, and actually it's a technology that's too closely associated with the cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. Yes. And that's just a different discussion. And I'm, I'm, I'm an optimist on that as well. But distributed ledger, I mean, I worked for Oracle for seven years. I mean, I know, I know database and I know its limitations. They do databases. They, they do a couple of databases, yeah. Yeah, and, um, and you know, now they're all of a sudden the world's largest cloud provider. It, it's amazing how Larry does that. <laughs> Just, it's all, it's all done, done overnight. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that uh, the idea for the merits that you mentioned earlier, right? right the security, the, uh, the reliability, and I think, when I think about like its biggest impact, it's probably in, in the government and education realm. Mm. Yeah, in the near term, right? Yeah, because you're just dealing with extreme numbers there, and the technology is really designed for extreme numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I, I, I mean, I, I, I showed a list in my presentation of sort of repositories that everybody I think could, could you know, would resonate with everybody. Yeah. Um, uh, for the fact that one of the things we do quite well in government is we collect and store data. And we want to make sure it's it's we, people can trust it, uh, that the data hasn't been meddled with, that it is harder to hack. We want to reduce that, uh, and we want to have that almost infinite audit trail of what happened to trend, to the data during its transaction. Yeah, right? but then you get this GDPR, right? And the the main essence of GDPR is that you need to be able to delete the data. So so there's a direct conflict with where the technology is going and where regulations heading in that regard. Yeah. So uh, just by uh, show of applause, and, and it's okay to be pro GDPR because there's a lot of good things uh, going on about data privacy that that's trying to accomplish. By applause only, uh, no hissing or booing, please. <laughs> just uh, how many folks think GDPR is a good thing? Okay, that was. Uh, and then let me just—it's general data protection regulations. Did, did you hear Yanni or Laurel just then? <laughs> I got. I only uh, uh, Yanni is the only thing I've heard. Okay, actually, we, we kept playing it on the car ride up here from Palo Alto last night, and we were in vehement disagreement. Great. So we're, I'm going to sign. Just go a little bit uh, back from the mic. Oh, okay. But you, but you good? I'm a little too. I'm too intense. My wife tells me. <laughs> good. So, uh, our, our producer just. Indicated there, we need okay. to back off. That's good. Okay, cool. Some mic hygiene. Did we? Uh, did no, we I want to do question. the opposite. The opposite yeah. question. So, yeah. how many folks think uh, think that GDPR is a step in the wrong direction? Oh, ooh. <laughs> I, here's what I saw. I saw. I saw some hand waving. Like I want to, but I don't want to be the only guy. Yeah. Uh, okay. it, by the way, it's a, it's, wow. it's audio. It's podcast. People can't see. Yeah, that's true. 
That's true. I was waving my hands. <laughs> you were waving your hands. Yeah, as if I was a dealer walking away from a if we kind of, if we sort of even um, step up a, another notch in terms of the the trends that I that I was demonstrating this morning, or, or you're talking about, um, you know, one of the things I think that's hardest for all of us, including myself, I think for you too, is just making sense of it, putting it in context for, yeah. with your life, with your organization. Uh, what's some tips for making sense of all? Oh, this? Just like keeping up with it. I, I mean, guess. I mean, can you imagine like how if it's tough keeping up with this stuff when you're living. In downtown Palo Alto, you're in a tech company. I mean, I can't imagine how people stay up to date on. How do you keep up? I, I, I tell you what I don't do is I, answer, I don't answer my phone when we're recording. <laughs> there you go. It's really live now. Yeah, I'm falling behind, you see? But I mean, seriously, I, I, think that the, I think there's a reason why the word FOMO didn't exist like 10, five years ago or whatever. I think, I think that there is an on, an up and coming or a, a distress that both companies and individuals are feeling about falling behind. I said FOMO. FOMO. Yes. <laughs> I did say FOMO. <laughs> you did. Okay. <laughs> yes. I, you, what, do you, what, what do you think? You don't, you don't agree? I, I do. I do. I, I struggle. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a person who is all over social You're media. You're everywhere. I, I read blogs and articles and books. Yeah. And I struggle. Struggle yeah. to make sense of it. I, I, I've really enjoyed sort of beginning to think about it in the context now of a fourth industrial revolution. I do think that that starts to help. Um, it's a framing for what's happening. The, the framing of the big changes, the impacts of those changes in every part of our lives. You know, so heavy. It is heavy. Too heavy. Yeah, we, so need, to, we need to balance this out with some, some, <laughs> some less heavy. What do we got that's less heavy? So when, when I played the audio yesterday, for Yanni versus yeah. Laurel. Yeah. We both heard Yanni. At first. But then you heard Laurel. And I couldn't get off Laurel. I, oh, that I, sounded just horrible. I, 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 I was with Yanni and anyway, there were witnesses. That's right. And, but I continued to hear Yanni. Yeah. Yeah. And then anyway. Something like that, by the way, uh, n none of us would have known about or cared about just a few years ago. This is technology at scale. Yeah. Right? The yeah. world was talking about this within an hour or two. It was kind of insane, right? Even the New York Times site crashed with all the people trying to download it last it night. It did. Or trying to listen to it, yeah. Now, you and I talk about a lot of this stuff, and it's easy actually to think that we're pretty, we can be pessimistic about it, but both of us are optimists, right? We're real. I, I am. Really I'm, a, really I'm a humanist. Like, I, I honestly believe that all things are getting better. I mean, you have to acknowledge that that 750 million that you said is no small potatoes. Like, just because it's getting better doesn't mean it's great. But, I mean, Everything you said on your on your keynote there that you know the the quality of life the lifespan itself all those things even crime I mean you'd think by re watching the news every day you'd think that the world's coming to an end but it's actually statistically getting better in so many ways it is and and in every category yeah and it's accelerating now we we uh, we've been thinking about this a lot and one of our thoughts is that uh, this is a great time to lead what, yeah what tell us maybe introduce that. I yeah, think. so I think there's a gap. I think I think people are still, um, you know, social media sort of is maxed out. I think the idea of broadcasting and and eyeball media has sort of reached a point where it's it's uh, discrediting itself. I call it truth decay. Uh, uh, what do you think of that one? That's a great hashtag. I kind of like it. <laughs> so truth decay. I think there's a truth decay going on, and I think that there's an opportunity for folks that are brave enough to start stepping forward and having real dialogue. I don't think we, I think we've gotten away from dialogue, transparency, those things aren't as sexy and fun, but that's actually what drives real change and impacts real people and creates credible insights. And I think, as we said earlier, when you increase the fact of truth decay and uh, on top of the shelf life of information, what we've got is a reliable source, the web, is deteriorating, it's losing value faster than we actually acknowledge today. And, and so I think there's new, new ways to, to create really credible outcomes, like doing a podcast with bottles of wine. <laughs> now I think there are other ways. I think it's as simple as like town halls are really important mm -hmm. and, and creating uh, human, and documenting hu human interactions and, and being, being willing to record certain events, being willing, willing to provide that click through all the way down. It's that transparency, it will always be the source of credibility.
That's incredible. Yeah. I, I, you know, there's two types of tamales. There's the yeah. guy at night when we're tired after work. Yeah. And then there's this guy who's had a couple of coffees in the morning. This is the Starbucks, Tom. I never yeah. heard this guy before. Yeah, I get a little excited about <laughs> it. Yeah, I like it. I think that's pretty awesome. You, you shared some great insights there. Um, so you 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 work on the on the private side of the economy, the private sector. I work on the public. I'll, I'll talk about the public in a second. Um, but what are your customers doing in response to some of these these uh, trends? Yeah, so I mean, our my startup is about creating a more credible, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a authentic engagement platform. And these right. companies use it for creating um, insights with panels of experts. And they use it for private uh, research, like qualitative research. And they get to talk to like 20 experts, oftentimes be anonymous, but it's a really sort of first-hand learning experience. And a lot of these companies, that's a new thing. They're used to like hiding behind cubes. And now companies are starting to get out more and they're starting to realize they can't have a fortress type environment. They need to open it up and break down the walls. And, and that's, you physically see the open workspace occurring in major companies. They're literally ripping out the cubes now because they realize that they've got to create a whole other level of, of transparency and dialogue. So what we see is companies that have been really conservative, like Procter & Gamble, like GE, right. they're at a point where they, they're forced. They are absolutely forced to change their ways. And it, unfortunately, you know, the pendulum needs to swing really hard in one direction until that gets people thinking new. But yeah, change is happening at a revolutionary pace in large enterprise today. Right. If you're just tuning in, this is Drinking Wine, Talking Tech. You realize this is live, right? I'm still Tom O'Malley. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, the, the, the phones are open, folks. That's Dial right. In. Dial in. Yeah. Um, I haven't told uh, Tom this is recorded and not live. Yeah, yeah. So right. it's, um, he thinks it's live. <laughs> um, so the, I mean, in, on, the, on, the, on the public side of things, first of all, this is rather, a lot of this is overwhelming. Yeah. I mean, we, the, I think we can all acknowledge that we are um, writing policy as we go, often um, behind the trend, right? So the trend happens, we respond. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm a person who thinks and researches and works in the transportation space. I didn't see scooters happening. I never anticipated scooters. That thing just happened overnight, and now we're scrambling. Yeah, it was like a two-week period. I went up to San Francisco, no scooter in sight. Two weeks later, now Scoot they're just littered everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, and that's just uh, emblematic, I think, of as city leaders and government leaders, uh, this type of catch-up. Right? Yeah. It, it happens fast. Now we're responding. I mean, how did how did we miss Bitcoin, dude? We, <laughs> we're, we're, all of our friends are. I have friends way into it. I'm at Copa Cafe. I can see when I go to swipe my card, it says, or you can pay with you know 15 Bitcoin. Four years ago, five years ago, and I'm. And is all I'm thinking to myself is, oh, I feel so cool. I'm in a coffee shop that has Bitcoin in it. Why wasn't I buying it? Like, what's wrong with me? If our friends were. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow. But yeah, yeah sometimes it's right under your nose. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. So, so I often think then, okay, so we know that. Yeah. Well, what are we missing right now? What, what's happening in six months from now that we're going to miss if we, if we, uh, you know, don't look in the right ways at well, the right places? There's a healthy, there's a healthy pause that I think people um, in in our audience today and people in your Role, Jonathan, they need to take. I mean, the stakes are so high. Yeah. Like, there's nothing wrong with throwing a thousand dollars into Bitcoin when it first comes out. <laughs> but if you're a government, it's not necessarily you're not playing those sort of yeah. long, long tail bets. Right? Well, let me let me even address that. I, I think you talk to a, a, a cultural core, which is, and we're uh, not, uh, we don't have a propensity towards risk. Right, uh, and and so we, we're, you might for a lot of good reasons for, for, for the yeah, right reasons, right, right. Uh, largely. I think what what the this fourth industrial revolution allows yeah. us to do is is take a little bit more risk, yeah. or if it not that it allows us. Let me rephrase that. It forces us to take a little bit more risk, uh, to experiment more. We have to have living labs, um, and I found that useful in the city of Palo Alto. Uh, I don't want to go all in, invest. You know, I take the the taxpayers' money very seriously. And, and so we have to be careful in what we do, but we also have to do some of it. And we have to do more of it now that we're- So like give an example of a lab that you've, a, a small thing, sandbox type idea that you've dabbled in. Well, we're very interested in the internet of things. Yeah. Um, we're interested in you know, having a sensor network in the city and you can do lots of things. You can detect the quality of air, yeah. right? And then 
you know, we can have academics at different universities research that. Um, so we do it on a, on a small scale. We'll do one or two blocks of sensors. We're not going to do sensors for the whole city. Uh, we're experimenting with um, uh, traffic counting around City Hall. Um, and because it's, it's, uh, it's a place where we can not only uh, it's, it's close by, right? So yeah. we can actually show people the technology. We can uh, tweak it if we have to because it's close at hand. Um, but we do it on a small scale. Yeah. And, and so we can see, we can collect sufficient data to make it meaningful. And, you know, then we use that to inform our decisions. Yeah. Um, so we have a series of those uh, appropriately sized living lab experiments. And I would encourage uh, cities uh, uh, all over the country and in California to to do more for that. I wonder if it's taking more risk or just being more like in tune. Like for example, um, you know, when things happen slower, cities might have moved at this threshold of mainstreamness. Yeah. Uh, but now that thresholds are coming so faster, it's almost like a challenge, as we said, sort of challenge to stay abreast. You don't necessarily need to move faster on the curve, but the time allotment is shrinking. It does, it does seem to be that way. Yeah. It does, seems to be less time. Yeah. Is hey, there less time? There's definitely less time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, You're going to ask me a question. You know, usually, I interrupted you. No, no, no. I, you know, I was going to ask you. Yeah. I, I'm just curious. It just popped in my head. Is it? You know there's gonna, people here, right? You're going to take, you're going <laughs> to let me wing it? No, so I'm wondering, because uh, I go into San Francisco in particular, and there's a lot of homeless folks. It's really sad. Yeah. Like, no one's really sad. Yeah. And then from a city standpoint, you know, if, we, if, we, if we're judging ourselves by our weakest and not by our strongest, what are we doing? How can technology help that? Have you heard any innovations that can, that can help maybe some of the gig economy? Is this... Is this potential to give? Can cities start? Like, I, I think I heard something, read something, somebody else's podcast that actually was informative. Sure. Had something on it around um, cities hiring the homeless for, like, cleanup and such. Is that, is mm -hmm. that a mentality that's starting to come in, or what's happening? Yeah, uh, look, that is a tough question. Yeah. I, I don't claim to be any type of expert. Uh, there are smart, good people working on this. Um, one of the ways I could kind of think about it as a technologist would be at more of the source because homelessness is an outcome to something right so what is the source is, is there insufficient economic opportunities for a segment of society I think it's New York I think New York was the original source they just sent everybody out here well I, I, I maybe but um, uh, you look at for example um, uh, mental uh, disease right yeah. and uh, we, computer science will help us create better medication, True. which can help people. Um, so we need to apply algorithms and big data and AI to uh, improving uh, medical out, you know, um, innovation. Yeah. So uh, economics, medicine, yeah. these are areas that technology can help. Yeah. Um, later on today, I'll be in the car, I'll think of a better answer, but right well, now, I mean, that's what I, I have. I think you nailed it. I mean, I really think that the, the point is solutions come from so many different areas, so many different technologies. You may be looking at a problem and thinking it has nothing to do with drones, and then all of a sudden it does. So back to you. How do you keep up? What, what do you read? Yeah, I, I, I don't think I really keep up is, is the answer. I, I'm, look, I love Twitter. Yeah. I, I know you, you and I talk about this I a lot. I just don't get it yet. You don't get okay. it. Uh, I get it. Yeah. I've got it for a while. Um, you have to figure out if it has a place in your life. Yeah. Uh, but I find it's a great source of knowledge. I yeah. like to follow people who are thinking about the things I'm thinking about. And by the way, I love to follow people who don't agree with me, who have a completely different opinion. Yeah, you're kind of weird like that. You're yeah. one of the first guys in a long time that I've met that loves when, when somebody disagrees. You're kind of like, hey, well, maybe I'm wrong. And you know, you've got to do that. Yeah, I, I don't you're know really why good at it, actually. Why are people so reluctant to uh, listen to an alternative point of view? Yeah. Even if you don't agree, even yeah. if you hate that point of view. Right. Hey, by the way, so uh, we got great people in this room. We do. Uh, there's amazing items going to happen uh, for the rest of the day. We're getting um, giveaways, raffles. We're going to keep the shirt off your back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, actually, maybe the vendors are doing this. And there's a hundred vendors idea. here doing. That's no, right. but but you had a great idea. What would you recommend to uh, folks in this room uh, to do for the rest of today? Ah, okay. Uh, that would would be really valuable. Yeah. So I think it's all connected to the the knowledge thing. You guys got to build your knowledge as fast as possible. Uh, when I first started my career, I was doing government and education sales for Quest Communication in the in the in, in California, and I was working with the state schools and doing OC3s and DS3s. And and one thing I realized is when I'm trying to sell, when I was back then, this is like 20 years ago, selling to the government 
people weren't that engaging. They weren't asking us a lot of questions. And quite frankly, I felt maybe it's because we always come across as salespeople, and no one really wants to get in that uncomfortable uh, sort of discussion where you feel like you're being sold to. What I'd say is push past that, and there are, you are going to get sold to, of course. But the information that those tech companies have is just so valuable to you. And so power through the sales stuff and press them to give you the info that you, the way that you want to have it. So if it's a Gantt chart about a process or a best practice, they have so much resource and they, they as companies are developing so much content and knowledge on their subjects. And you just got to tell them, put it in my format and give it to me because I need it. And you do. You, you do need to know what everybody's doing. So I'd say lean in on the, on the vendors in the other room and get the knowledge from them. Hey, you know what? We've uh, wasted another 20 minutes Yeah. Uh, in our podcast today. Uh, how do you think that went? Well, this is, I mean, usually we record for an hour and then we edit <laughs> down to 20 minutes. So there's not a lot on the cutting room floor here, which... Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. I can think of one comment, but that's about <laughs> it. <laughs> I always make them look good. You know? Yeah. Um, uh, any, any parting words for you? I mean, there's some vendors in the room from a government side. What should they do differently to maybe make that marriage better? Yeah, I, I, do, I do think that uh, the, the tech vendor community can do, can sell better into government. Um, uh, and what I mean by that is a couple of, couple of, couple of meanings. One, the one meaning I have is uh, we need solutions. Yeah. More than ever, yeah. Uh, that there are stakes some, have never been higher. Never been higher. Yeah. The, the, the challenges in our cities and our, and our in our agencies are significant, and so we need a lot more innovation. So I, I would encourage that. But you know, I, I sit on lots of panels and I go to lots of conferences, and folks will come up to me and they say, "Have you heard of such and such tech?" And I say, "No." Uh, I said, "You've never reached out to me. You, you haven't made an effort to call my office, or um, and you know the vendors always kind of cringe because they're like, aren't we always spamming you with yeah. uh, uh, emails and stuff? Well, do better, do yeah. better because we uh, there's a lot of CIOs around California who are listening, and we want to hear from them. Yeah, uh, maybe an approach with knowledge rather than a pitch would be more attractive. Possibly, huh? yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so this is, I think, this has been pretty cool. Um, I, I, I enjoyed I, it. Yeah, I, you, you did great. Thanks, yeah. man. You did, you did fantastic, <laughs> didn't you? Yeah, yeah." Oh. Thank you. That proves we have a live audience, which is really incredible. Um, you can find out more about this podcast and all our podcasts on Facebook. By yeah. the way, Facebook.com forward slash of it. Drinking Wine Talking Tech. Send us a bottle of wine as well. It's A-OK. -okay. <laughs> Your favorite. And then we'll mention you on the, on the next podcast. <laughs> <laughs> if we remember. <laughs> That's right. Um, you can listen to the pod, this podcast and both previous seasons on iTunes and all your favorite podcast platforms. Uh, so, I'm Jonathan Reichenthal. And I'm Tom O'Malley. Thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs> Good stuff, man.